God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Father, we just want to say thank you because of who you are and all you've done. We thank you because you are alive and you have all power in your hand. You are a great God. You are a powerful God. You are the God that we depend upon. And so we invite you to have your way in this place in this time, God. We place our eyes upon you and we will reflect on your goodness and lift up worship to you and magnify you so that you can draw all men and women and boys and girls to yourself. So we surrender this moment. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. We want to invite you to stand with us as we prepare to lift up worship to the Lord. He is a good God. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. Truly our God is greater. He's got all power in his hands. Say, what are you turned in? What are you turned into I? Open the eyes. Open the eyes of the blind. No one. There's no one like you. Say, none like you. None like you. Yes. And into the darkness. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes. Out of the ashes we rise. No one. None like you, none like you. Say our God is greater, our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and powerful. darkness you shine out of the ashes out of the ashes we rise nobody like no jesus like you. none like you none like you oh say our god is greater our god is greater our god is stronger god you are high and power. 
our God. Truly, he is the same God, the same God that delivered my grandparents and ancestors and the same God that we read about in the Bible. He is that God today. So we call on that God in confidence, knowing just like he showed up in days past, he'll show up for us. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that I will see your covenant, and I'm calling on the God of Moses. The one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for me. Yeah. Oh God, oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. Yeah. How I Shepherd boy courageous I may not face Goliath But I've got my own giants Oh God, my God, I need you You say, oh God, my God, I need you now How I need you Oh, we say, oh rock, oh rock, oh rock God. 
Come on and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody believe he's faithful? Keep playing that, y'all. Anybody grateful that he's the same God? He ruled in power back then, oh, yes. and he's ruling in power right now. He was a healer back then, and he's a healer right now. He was providing back then, and he's providing right now, and we rejoice today. He's still a bridge over troubled waters. He's the same God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you honor. We give you praise, oh God. Thank you, Father. You may be seated. Musicians keep playing. We, we've had a a tough week this week. God is the same God. He's always providing. He's always making ways. He's always opening doors. He's always keeping us. For that, we give him glory, honor, and praise. In a second, I'm going to have Reverend Chandra just lead us one more time through, through that. I want to introduce our preacher today. We're blessed as we stand together in worship. It's not every day that you come in contact with great men of God who open their hearts and their lives to you. Without knowing me, Dr. Clark welcomed my wife and I into the community of faith. And we were in Boston not long after the Eagles beat the Patriots. I was walking through Boston with my Eagles hat on. Came in church and despite the different sides of the field we sat on, Dr. Clark welcomed me to his office and to his home with his family, took us out to, to eat, and we became brothers beloved, and I'm so grateful for his investment in the body of Christ, his investment in my life personally. Dr. Sean Clark is the pastor of the New Beginnings Church of God in Christ there in Massachusetts, and I'm so very grateful for his willingness to come on this difficult week for us, church had a significant loss this week. Many were, were wrestling and struggling with the, the grief and loss, and we've been trying to encourage and walk with people, and sometimes even uh, those who try to help others need some help. And so I'm so very grateful for his friendship and his willingness to leave his own sacred desk in Massachusetts that he might come and share with us on this Lord's Day, this Sunday after the resurrection. Sunday that we celebrate his great power on last week. That's why the song is so significant. And he had power then, 
He has power now. So after Reverend Chandra leads us one more time or two more times through, we're going to hear from this sacred desk none other than Reverend Dr. Sean Clark. And I want you to receive him as he comes. Let us say praise the Lord. If you'd be so kind, grab that hand that's next to you that we might have a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege, the honor, and the opportunity you have afforded us to be in this place. Thank you, O oh God, for your anointing that breaks every chain, every yoke, and every feeder. This is certainly the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray even now, God, that you would word my mind with understanding. Give me the ability to speak forth the dictates of thine heart that your people might be encouraged, that you might be glorified. This is your servant's prayer in Jesus' name. Everyone said amen. Before you take your seat, do me a favor. Look at your neighbor eyeball to eyeball. Can't look him in the eye. Look at the nose. Can't look at the nose. Look at the chin. Simply say, I love you today. And there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, say to the person on the other side, say, I love you also. And there's nothing you can do about it. Now take about 10 seconds and tell them why you love them. Come on, take about 10 seconds. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I love you today. And you can't do nothing but you. Maybe see it in the presence of the Lord. Certainly God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Do give honor today to the spirit of the Lord, to his endeared son, to the Holy Spirit in whom we desire to dwell so richly in us. I say it quite often that we don't praise God because we feel good, but we praise God because God is good. How many know it today that God is the very best thing that ever happened to us, where we are glad. We certainly give honor to the angel of this house and the person of Pastor Chris Benny. Say amen for him. Uh, my friend, my brother, I appreciate him uh, tremendously. I've learned to love those of you who are on this side of heaven, the only I have with this pastor is he has the wrong football team. And I recognize that it doesn't make good sense to try to get someone to say amen and talk about the Eagles. Uh, for the first time you hear me say it, go Eagles! When I go back home, when I go back home, it's going to be go uh, pages all day long. To his lovely wife, we certainly honor him. And her, to all the Reverend clergy, both male as well as female, God bless you, kind sir. So good to see you. God bless you, a woman of God, leading us in that such beautiful, uh, wonderful praise and worship. I'm going to ask my lovely wife to stand, my lady, Maxine Clark. This year, life lasts, and the Lord shall say the same. We'll be celebrating 32 years of marriage. 
to my son and my grandson. I'm going to ask the uh, minister, elder, the, the rights to stand. My wonderful uh, son-in-law and my lovely daughter, uh, Ventress Wright. I loved him tremendously. When he started coming to Boston a few years back, I thought he was coming to the church because he liked my preaching. Next thing I know, they're getting married. I love that young man. He's such a wonderful uh, man of God, and I appreciate him tremendously. I do recognize that there is a service after this, and usually I'm a little bit more longer in my preliminaries. So forgive me if I am not overly long, but I want to go immediately to the Word of God. I was taught many years ago that the three T, the three T's are take your text, text take you, then take your seat. And my pastor said, what you can preach in 20 minutes, save us for the la next time. And so I'll try to stay around that frame. And then I do recognize that it is our communion service. And I tell the preachers who I have the privilege of instructing back home that you always preach into the occasion. So please pardon me if I'm not presenting a first Sunday message. But I do believe I heard from the Lord in terms of this ministering uh, to the house. Two verses of scripture. Please turn with me if you would. To the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 32. And then I will ask you to go to the book of Habakkuk. Uh, we go back and forth, Habakkuk, Habakkuk, Habakka. And so because I'm from Boston, <laughs> we say Habakkuk in Boston. Romans chapter 8, verses 18, 30, and 32. Uh, actually, I'll start at... Excuse me, verse number 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. Going down to verse 31 and verse 32. What shall I then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Going over to Habakkuk uh, chapter 3, 17 through 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, and the labor of the olive shall fail, and the field shall yield no meat, the flock shall be cut off. It's going to be terrible, y'all, from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, parenthetically, will I rejoice in the Lord, and I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like hinds feet. He will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. Verse number 18, uh, get in your hearing. Yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Be so kind. Repeat after me the words of the subject matter and simply say, anyhow. Look at your neighbor and say, anyhow. anyhow. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how dark, how difficult it may seem. Through it all, we have to learn how to say, anyhow. The second book I read to you, the book of Habakkuk, the name of Habakkuk is an interesting dichotomy. On one end, it means the wrestler. And on the other end, it means the embracer. He is yet wrestling with what God allowed. And at the same time, he is yet embracing the sovereign will of God. He is one of the only prophets in the Bible that God allowed to question him. And herein lies the problem. Sometimes you are allowed in the Bible to question God and ask God, well, what in the world is going on? And other times, conversely, God said, don't question me. I'm sovereign. Shut up and listen. When he questioned God as to why God allowed a certain situation to come, God actually gave him an answer. Yeah. He wrestled with what God gave him, and at the same time, he embraced him. When you look at the scriptural backdrop real quickly, chapter 1 talks about his complaint. Buck is telling God, listen, the people that you called me to prophesy to, the people who you called me to preach to, Judah, namesake, means to praise and worship God. These people you called me to preach to are doing everything against your will. Right, right. They are wicked people. God, you have to do something about them. Right. He complains to God about the situation. God gives him an answer that he does not yet like or even appreciate. 
at that particular time. God told them the Babylonians are going to come. A people, a nation, more wicked than you. They are going to enslave you for captivity being 70 long years. Chapter 2, God goes on to tell him. He says, wait, consider who I am and keep quiet. And then he says, the just shall live by faith. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. God was telling him, you don't understand it. You don't know why it happened, but I still want you to trust in me and have faith in me. God concludes that thought by saying, the just shall live by faith. In our parenthetical verse uh, 317, it says, though it's going to be bad, though it's going to be hard, he makes the statement, yet will I trust him. It hurt, it doesn't feel good, yet will I trust him. I may have to cry sometime. It may feel bad and difficult, yet will I trust him. In other words, he is saying, anyhow. I want to observe this morning that true Christians, watch this, must come to grips with the fact that diamonds do not sparkle until they have been cut and they have been polished. We are diamonds in the rough, and we are going through a cutting, polishing process that does not feel good. The Bible says all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Want to observe on today that true Christians must realize that stars don't shine the brightest until the darkest hour of the night. Did not see the star shining in the sky until it got real, real dark. Matter of fact, it got so dark I was by myself and I started crying when I didn't understand the mind of God. Have you ever went through a situation where you had to say anyhow? Have you ever had a bill come your way where you had to say anyhow? Has anyone ever died unexpectedly? Have you ever been laid off your job and you had to say anyhow? Has the devil ever chased after you and tried to tear you down? But you had enough wherewithal to stand flat-footed and say, Lord, I got to trust you anyhow. True Christians must understand that roses do not release the true fragrance until they have been bruised and crushed. Roses smell good naturally, but if you want to get the true essence out the rose, crush it a little bit. Bruise it a little bit. You are a rose that is being crushed by God purposefully to allow you to smell a little bit good. Paul said, you see, the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. He said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Come to tell you on tonight that true Christians must remember that gold does not glisten until it had been heated in the hottest furnace. Now note this, if you would, this for a brief moment, that the melting point of gold is 1,943 degrees Fahrenheit. This is one of the hottest melting points of any other metal. Gold is precious. Gold is pliable. Gold is something that was all laid and ordained in the tabernacle of God. Was it not Job himself who began to question God and God did not give an answer, but God told him who he was. Where were you, Job, when I laid the constellation of Orion? Where were you when I put the spots on the leopard? Where were you? Do you know what time the mountain goes to birth? And then God said to Job, Job, I sent the lightning bolts on the way. And they come back to me saying, Lord, here I am. After all of that, Job put his hand over his mouth and said, God, please forgive me. I had no idea what I was talking about. And then Job said, when I come out, I shall come out like pure gold. My wife turned her back on me anyhow. My children died anyhow. I lost all my goods anyhow. I'm sick in my body and my mind anyhow. True Christians must also realize that the ugly caterpillar does not become a graceful butterfly until it goes through the lonely process of metamorphosis. Can you see the caterpillar crawling around? Can you see it eating itself until it is an engorged? And then all of a sudden the caterpillar says, man, 
I must be going through a process. And then the caterpillar begins to spit. And as it spits, this substance goes all around it, and it is now in the cocoon. Most caterpillars, when they do this, they burrow underground to be by itself, or they'll go underneath a branch, and they'll be by themselves. Why they are there alone, they are going through this process called change. If God is silent, I would submit to you, it's not that God doesn't hear us. It's not that God is not there. He's just putting you through a process that he might get the quality out of your life. Everyone say process. Come on, say one more time. Say process. Now watch this. How long does a caterpillar in a cocoon before it becomes a butterfly? Most butterflies in moths stay inside a chrysalis or cocoon for between 5 to 21 days. If there's a really harsh place that they're in, they'll stay there for two years or three years. If it's not come in the past, perhaps, God is still working on you. If you're by yourself, perhaps, God is positioning you to be blessed by him. It's not working yet, but God. Is positioning me. It's not happening yet, but God is positioning me. You are in process, and when you come out, God is going to cause you to say, anyhow. The word anyhow, by definition, is any matter whatsoever. At any rate, in any event, in any cause, regardless of the present situation, nevertheless, I know how it feels. I know what's going on in my mind. I know what's going on in my spirit, but I still have to say anyhow. The Bible says that in the last days it shall be a great falling away. That nation shall be against nation. Kingdom shall be against kingdom. That the love of many shall wax cold. But it also says in the last days I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. In your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Based upon this text, we have to understand that there are waves of anointing from God and there are waves of an attack from the devil. We must realize that in order to survive the next wave of an attack from the devil, we must develop an anyhow disposition or an anyhow spirit, if you please. Ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have an anyhow spirit? Come on, say, do you have an anyhow spirit? And anyhow, spirit, watch this, is available through great trials and situations and tribulations. It took you a while to say, nothing shall move me. You didn't say when you first went into your situation, I know I didn't. If truth be told, when you first went into your last great trial, many of you went in kicking and screaming. Many of us went in hollering and fussing, saying, oh, no, God. Don't allow this thing to happen to me. Some of us went in complaining and straining. None of you would what Jeremiah said when the going got tough. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse number 5, he says this, If you have raced with the footmen and they have worn you out, how can you compete with the horses if you stumble in the country? How can you manage in the thickets of Jordan? Pardon my digression this for a moment. You remember Jeremiah in chapter 20 when he's in the dungeon, uh, not for doing wrong, but for doing right. right. He is by himself. God, you told me to go preach, so I did it. Yeah. God, you told me to prophesy what you said, and I did it. And I find myself all by myself. The Bible says that Jeremiah told God, you tricked me. Yeah. You fooled me. I didn't know it was going to be like this. Remember when you got saved, you got saved, and they didn't give you all the details. Uh, no one told you they're going to laugh at you. No one told you they're going to cuss you out. No one told you you're going to be attacked the way you are. Remember how they, you got saved. You came running. But then when it happened... You remember how it was when it happened? Jeremiah told God, you tricked me, you fooled me. I did not know it was going to be like this. I will not say anything more in your name. And the Bible says, while he is there, he's looking at the condition of the world. He's looking and seeing that the impending doom is going to come. And then he said, when he wanted to be quiet, I tried to be quiet, but I could not. I was worried before bearing. I could not stay. But the word of God was in my belly like a burning fire. In other words, he said, 
anyhow. He said, anyhow, it doesn't feel good anyhow. He said, anyhow, I'm crying, I'm in prison. Anyhow, sometimes, in spite of the hell you're going through, you got to say, anyhow, in spite of how they talk about you, make fun of you, laugh at you, you got to say, anyhow, if I got to go by myself, anyhow, if I got to cry, I'm going to say, anyhow, anyhow, in the morning, in the time, in the nighttime, any time in a new day, any <laughs> Say one more time. Say anyhow. Anyhow, spirit is developed through great trial and tribulation. Watch this. Anyhow, spirit will cause people to hate you and be jealous of your gift. David had nothing going for him but a dream in a vision. But the Bible said while he was by himself, God was with him. Can you remember him not being understood by his mama and daddy? Can you imagine him being hated on by his brothers? Do you see him go into part of his house? His wife lied upon him and now he's in prison for 13 years. While he is there, God is still speaking to him. He yelled, held on to his faith. What was he saying while he was there? He was saying anyhow, this prison does does not define me. My pain does not define me. My tears does not define me. I just believe no matter how it looks like, God is still with me. He said, anyhow. Noah kept on building the ark in spite of the noise, the noise of laughter, the noise of ridicule, the noise of hatred, the noise of envy, the noise of strife, the noise of being ostracized by his so-called friend. Noah preached for 120 years, and no one got to live with it except for his family, but he still said, anyhow, what do you do when God gives you a promise, and that promise takes a long time? Come here, Abraham, for a moment. You're going to have a son, 24 years years passes and God told him son it's time to believe in me now he told him I am El Shaddai is anything too hard for me this time next year you're going to have a son he said I might to keep on saying anyhow the knife is in my back anyhow it hurts anyhow God has been good to me anyhow Watch this. That anyhow spirit would cause you to act strange. Didn't you lose your job while you're rejoicing? I got to rejoice because God has been good to me anyhow. Didn't the doctor tell you cancer and sugar diabetes? Yes, he did. But I got to trust in God anyhow. Anyhow. Man, isn't your, your marriage falling apart? Uh, why not curse God? I can't do that because God has been good to me. Was it not Paul and Silas was in prison they were locked up and they decided to have a praise party all by themselves can you see them in prison they said this is what I'll do I'll praise the Lord and sing songs of Zion and as they praised God the Bible said that the earth began to shake when they said anyhow God said I'll fix the situation I challenge you on today no matter what it looks like no matter how it feels no matter what they're telling you no matter what the report is you still got to say anyhow. Look at your neighbor one more time and say anyhow. Watch this if you would. Anyhow spirit would cause you to elevate your praise. Say it with me if you'd be so kind. Say neighbor. Anyhow spirit would cause you to elevate your praise. You don't praise God. Watch this because you feel good. But you praise God because God is good. Every now and then you got to give God praise on credit. Sir, what you praising God for? Isn't it bad? Yes, it is. But when you praise God for what he's doing now, it's called gratitude. But when you praise God for what he's about to do, it's called faith. If I were you, I'll let the redeemed of the Lord say so because God has been good to you. I want to observe on this morning, although there may be no money in the bank, you still got to say anyhow. Although there may be no food on the table, you still got to say anyhow. Although there may be no harvest in the field, you still got to say anyhow. Although you may be by yourself, you still got 
got to say anyhow. There may be no checks in the mail, but you still got to say anyhow. There's problems all around you. You still got to say anyhow. When you look at the text very quickly, we have in chapter 2 where God said, wait a minute, consider who I am and keep quiet. The word considered means to think carefully about. When I think about who he is and all the power that he has, I got to say anyhow. You remember in John chapter 11 where the Bible said that Lazarus was dead. He was dead like a dog. He was dead for four days and Jesus Christ came on the scene and said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. In other words, if the situation is dead, it's not dead with him. Anyhow means to contemplate. Anyhow means to ponder. Anyhow means to ruminate. Anyhow means to assess. Anyhow means I know it's hard. I know it's difficult, but I still got to say anyhow. Let's go to the second text. I got to rush on now. It says in Romans, what then shall we say to these things? These things that are hard. These things that are difficult. These things that are making me cry. If God be for us, who can be against us? It goes on to say, if he did not spare his only son, but gave us everything, how can we not rejoice? Anyhow, I know it's hard. Anyhow, I know it hurts. Anyhow, I know they laughed at you. Anyhow, your back is against the wall. Anyhow, it's falling apart. Anyhow, he's God. He has power. He has might. Anyhow. <laughs> Anyhow, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter how it is. He's a powerful God. There's none like him in all the earth. When God steps in, everything has to line up. When trouble comes, everything has to get better. He's God, and he's God alone. Anyhow. Shall we slay me? God, well, I trust him. The last part of the verse says, I'll make your feet like hinds feet. Hinds have the ability to call up mountains and not fall. No other creature on the face of the earth can scale a mountain like that. I'll make your feet like hinds feet. Trust him. Believe upon him and watch God work it out. Stop believing in God when God says, I'm no longer God. Stop believing God when he says, I'll come off the throne. I look through Genesis to Revelation. It's not going to happen. Hebrews, Jesus Christ is saying, yesterday and forever. In heaven and on earth, he has power. It is my sincere prayer. No matter what you deal with, no matter what you're going through, you have to say, Anyhow, if God before us, man of God, who can be against us? He's God and he stands alone. Please stand on your feet that I might say a brief prayer. Anyhow, wanted to give up. Wanted to throw in a towel. Wanted to say, God, is it worth it? Corinthians 15. Verse number 58, be steadfast and movable, always involving in the works of the Lord for as much as you know, your laboring is not in vain in the Lord. Can you imagine when we die after coming through all this and we'll hear him say, well done, my good and faithful son, you may be faithful with a few things, into thou, into the joy. It will be worth it. Hold on. Every head bowed. Every eye closed. Father, we thank you for the privilege. 
and the opportunity of being here on today. Touch these thy children from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. Help us to recognize we face nothing but defeated foe. When they came to the banks of the Jordan, when they came to the Red Sea, the man of God said through God, the enemy that you see before you, you shall see them no more forever. Anyhow, strengthen from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. Let your will be done. This is our prayer and our endeavor in Jesus' name. One more time, everyone say, anyhow. My God. Come on, clap your hands as we celebrate and thank God for the message and for the messenger. Father, we ask that you would pour back 60, 30, even a hundredfold in your manservant for all that he's poured out on this day. Any, say anyhow, no matter what I face, anyhow, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here and you've not placed saving faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus, who is the Christ, the one who can carry you through to the place where you can have an anyhow spirit. If you've not yet yielded your life to him in such a way, your testimony is things I used to do, I can't do no more. Places I used to go, I can't go anymore. If that's you today, I believe God is inviting you to get to know him. If you want to be saved today, just slip your hand up right where you are. We'd love to pray with you. We're not in a hurry to pray for you. We'll, we'll stop what we're doing to see about you. If you're online today and you heard the word of the Lord through Dr. Clark and you want to yield your life to him, you can type in the comments I've decided. We'll reach out to you on this Lord's Day. Perhaps you're here and you say, I want to be a part of this fellowship. We're not perfect, but we are forgiven. We're growing in grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to be your pastor. Father, thank you for your word. We pray that it is sealed in our heart, that it germinates in us, and it produces fruit in our lives and fruit that remains. It's our prayer today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you be seated? I want to serve the Lord's table. Reverend Wright, Reverend Parks, would you come as we prepare to serve the Lord's table? Reverend April, would you come stand with me as we serve the Lord's table? The night the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he met with his disciples in the upper room. And Jesus was a, a good Jew, and they shared in the Passover meal together uh, on that Thursday. And the Bible says after they had shared in fellowship, Jesus interrupts the fellowship takes a loaf of bread and he blesses it and he breaks it and he shares it with his friends. He says to them, this is my body that's broken for you. The Bible says likewise he took a common chalice, a single cup of wine and he began to explain to his friends, this is the new agreement, the new testament in my blood and he told them to drink ye all of it. As often as we do it, we show his death until he comes. The apostle Paul picks up on this thought. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it said, whenever we come to the Lord's table, we ought to examine ourselves, not examine our neighbor, not worry about somebody else. The old hip-hop song says, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Paul says, if you eat and drink this in an unworthy manner, you can eat and drink condemnation unto yourself, and none of us want to do that, so we're going to pray. A prayer of consecration. As Reverend April prays, I want you to pray in the privacy of your heart because God can hear you and her at the same time. We're going to ask the Lord if he would cleanse us even now. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you thanking you for this sacred moment. We pray now, God, that you wash us with the blood of the Lamb. We come before you, God, for confessing our sins, asking that you will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And now we pray, God, over these sacraments, over these elements, God, we pray that you will transform them from their natural state to their spiritual state, that they might represent the Lord's body, the Lord's blood, as we do this in remembrance of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, yes, and it flows, it flows, it 
our sin before our all-wise and all-knowing Savior. Let us commune together. Let us eat. And let us drink and drink ye all of it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Aren't you grateful for the communion table that we get to come? Let's stand on our feet. The Bible says after they ate and drank, they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. We're going to Leave this place and go somewhere, but let's sing this together. Amen. Say there is power. There is power. Power, power oh, and it's wonder working. working. It's found in, in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Power, power oh, and it's wonder working. working. Power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Say that again. there is power. There is power. Found in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, and it's wonder working power. In the one more time, Red. Blood of the Lamb. Say there is power. There is power, power, and it's wonder working. It's found in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. In the precious blood of the Lamb. So we're so Hallelujah. grateful. Dr. Clark, thank you so much for being with us on this Lord's Day. Lady Clark and, and family, thank you guys for making uh, the trip from Massachusetts to be with us uh, this weekend. We are the better because of our time with you, sir. And we are grateful. If this is your first time in worship, we do invite you to let us know you're here. If you're online, you can text first time to 833-226-7715. If you're in the building, you could stop by our next steps table, which is in the back on your left, on my left, your right. Sister Evella is back there excited to give you a gift to our first time visitors. So if it's your first time, stop by the table and you can receive your gift today. We also invite you to give. Giving is a part of worship, and so we invite you to give. The many ways to give are there. You can text to give. You can use Cash App. You can use the website, DelvalEast.com, and you can give at our Next Steps table to my left and to your right. We thank God for all of you in worship this day, and we want to make sure you leave knowing that you have an anyhow spirit. Amen? Amen. Let me pray for you as we go our separate ways. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you his great peace. May he bless you going in and bless you coming out. May he meet you in your weakness and maximize you in your strength. May he minister through your hands and may he motivate you to serve him faithfully until it is that we see our Savior face to face or we're gathered together in this place or online. Our prayer is that you might go in peace, go in love, go in joy. Say, neighbor, anyhow, neighbor, I'm so glad I came to church. God bless you. Make sure you come greet the preacher. We love you. God bless you. Go in peace.